welcome back to Pierce World Knitting. I'm Jennifer, and this is a knitting podcast all about knitting, yarny adventures, and travel. Thank you so much for joining me today. And in today's episode, we have a traditional knitting podcast coming at you with finished objects and whips. We do not have any new fresh yarn to share. However, many fun knitting adventures were had and will be shared as well. Um, I want to talk about the holiday shrug cow as well um, and just a little nod to the knitting injury that I've experienced. So let's get started. First of all, we'll talk about the Holiday Shrug Club Cal. This is a cal that I am running or knit along um, that we started uh, November 3rd and will be running until December 31st. Thank you so much for people that have already started participating and have posted on Instagram um, because everyone that is participating and wishes to enter our giveaway, um, they are hashtagging hashtag Holiday Shrug Club Cal. And that is an entry to win one of two prizes. The first prize is a $50 gift certificate from the Knitting Loft that you can purchase as you wish um, until your heart's content. I spoke about the details of this in my last video. And the second prize is a fabulous pattern from Dear Jackie Rose. This was a donated pattern, um, and this is a paid for pattern normally, and is the Soho Square. This is starting to come all over the internet and brings such a fun option as um, a winter and cozy accessory. Colors have been used and it's been a delight to be seen. As we press on into the Holiday Shrug Club Cal, um, I have completed my first um, cinch shrug. This is a paper pattern by Jackie Rose, which I purchased right before our cast on date and happily knit on it while we were in the end of Lunenburg into Quebec back home. Um, I just recently cast off and she's been a joy to wear. Um, talking about the cinch shrug, this is one of four uh, patterns um, that are up for an option for the Holiday Shrug Club Cal. The cinch is the option that I chose to knit this time as my first um, piece for participation in the Holiday Shrug Club. This is also a pay for pattern um, that I purchased uh, from our designer, uh, Jackie Rose. It's a gorgeous um, fitted shrug. I have knit the Saturday Shrug before, which is a non-fitted shrug and is basically a rectangle, but can be worn in a really beautiful way. Um, you can also participate in the knit along with the Friday and Sunday shrugs. So any of those weekend shrugs. And the beautiful bonus is that those three shrug patterns are completely free. They have three different gauges um, going from DK up to super chunky for the Sunday. The Saturday is like an air and weight. And so this is kind of what I mimicked um, producing the cinch shrug. I'll talk about this um, as we go on. So this I knit with um, just under three balls of Camarose Snefnug that I purchased from the Knitting Loft uh, in the black. There are uh, not only a, a tighter, cozier neck, and I knit it, um, I'd say, I think it was to pattern the, the length or the depth of the neckline that Jackie had designed. Um, a number of stitches that are consistent, almost like a raglan sweater or raglan stitch. Um, and on either side, there are increases um, every so often according to the pattern. Uh, what I had done initially is I had cast on uh, less stitches than the pattern had called for. I'm just looking to see how many less. Uh, it was, blah, blah, blah. Uh, eight less stitches, I believe. Uh, I used a smaller needle size, not that that's a shocker if you've been watching, um, with a US 7. I believe the original pattern calls for a 10, um, but I wanted a cozier, tighter gauge happening, and the way I knit, it would have been too loose and 
the gauge would have not worked out anyway. Um, so it's super cozy. The top of the uh, neckline, and I should say it's a pattern that's created from top down. The cast on edge is a gifted yarn uh, from Skin Cocaine. This is from Gina, who I met at uh, Rhinebag and was so glorious in giving out um, mini skeins as gifts. And so what I did when I was away, if you've seen, I think my last video and maybe Instagram, I did not bring my scale nor my yarn swift. Um, so we improvised with furniture that was in our Airbnb and got a little creative because I wanted to cast on with the skein cocaine mini skein, but um, it needed obviously more than one strand. This was a fingering um, weight yarn. I ended up uh, producing a cast on edge with five of those strands to kind of equal out, balance out the Camaro Snefnug gauge. And it worked like a charm. And I feel like it's such a fun little like pop of color against the very like rich, dark black and uh, super cozy. I'm so excited to be running this net along as a garment that you can produce for yourself because it's an accessory that goes with so many different things, um, but also is a gift net. This is a fast and simple gift net, also very beginner friendly um, for those celebrating one of the many holidays coming up in the month of December. Um, what I've done is I have shot some styling videos that I just have too much of a good time doing and I have three different outfits that I've put together um, with the holidays coming up. I also have a dinner for my mother's birthday and so I will be wearing one of these three outfits. If you'd like to shout out which outfit is your favorite, um, I will make sure that I wear this outfit on my next dinner or cocktail out, um, possibly as early as my mother's birthday. Let's get into those videos. Let's get into styling the cinch shrug. Now knowing, of course, this was a cinch to knit up. This did not take a lot of time at all. And we're gonna get right into it here. Um, so just showing that it is a fitted shaped shrug uh, just displaying the gorgeous cast on edge again from Skin Cocaine Yarn and the black again is the Camaro Snefnug. These are the Raglan style stitches. They go on either shoulder and have increases that are worked of course on either side of the Raglan. So you have um, basically increases that are happening at your shoulder to give a really gorgeous little hug effect and shaping. I've got to say getting it on maybe isn't the prettiest thing. Um, I'm sure Jackie Rose does a much better job of doing this, but uh, there we are, we're learning. I've got this just with a simple uh, white blouse that I had uh, purchased from a thrift shop. It's got a fun little edge to it, so I thought it might you know, make it a little more special. And just with a really slim jean, I'm pairing it with slingback shoes. Of course, for me in the city, I could never wear this walking out and about. However, you know, if I'm not going that far, I do love like a pointed toe ballet flat kind of thing with a jean and a blouse. I just feel like it is so well put together and so easy. Um, what I'm doing here is I will be putting this with a old black leather jacket I have. This was from a denier outlet from, I'd have to say, maybe my undergrad university. And it wasn't even the original. I was such, I, I haven't changed. This neckline of the leather jacket was a lower, like biker style jacket. I was obsessed with high necks even then. So I asked them to rip it out and sew in, um, a like mock neck and they did for like I think it was like ten dollars at the time and I was thinking this is so worth it uh it was definitely one of my very favorite jackets I don't wear it a lot but I thought the really beautiful like fluffiness of the shrug and then that tight like leather look of the jacket would be awesome and I feel like it is 
I really adore the two different textures of the leather and that alpaca together. And then the double neck, like the big chonker neck from the leather jacket. And then obviously from the shrug. This is the Everybody Loves This Hat hat. Uh, this is designed by Faye Wolves. Uh, this is the purchased yarn that I got from the Mariner's Daughter in Lunenburg in Nova Scotia. And uh, it's definitely a super fun like pop of color. I really enjoy it. It's a it's more of a rustic yarn. I'll go into the details about the hat um, when it comes to the hat. But I wasn't super digging this look. I wanted something a little more, I don't know, like classic. This is um, another hat. This is the Tilda hat. This one is a free hat pattern by Inese Sang. Um, this I also knit in the Camaro Snefnug. Um, which obviously <laughs> goes super well and that monochromatic look of the black. This is a uh, simple cable knit hat. It's really hard to tell on the black but I kind of like the little you know undertone nature of the cable. Now I'm pairing it with the Musselboro hat. This is a really popular design with a hat that's um, designed by Yosol Yosolda and I knit this with uh, West Yorkshire Spinnery uh, DK. It's a pretty, I mean, you could tell. She's a crisp hat. She's like a Coney. Um, it's a fun look, but I just, again, I was like, maybe not so much for this. Uh, I had a different vision in my mind if I was gonna wear a hat with this. This is a super orange uh, hipster hue, a hipster hat by Petite Knit. Um, this is a course classic double rib hat and uh, this was knit in the double sunday and i'm like okay that's good i'm liking the pop of color i'm liking the fit of the tightness and it's a merino wool um for my head i can never wear rustics on my head my forehead's too too gentil getting into the next look for the cinch shrug this is the first of three um that i'm going to be showing you for uh, my next dinner out celebrating my dear mother for her birthday um pairing with the cinch shrug of course because it's going to be a chilly one i've got a silk shell from eileen fisher and a pair of um i think it's like a washable crepe pan from also eileen fisher back in the day when I was slightly obsessed with this brand. Um, the pants are fun. They've got like a little faux wraparound edge at the front and a pocket. And I'm just pairing it with a uh, suede, like a neutral suede heel, um, but really enjoying all of the black. And again, the cinch shrug is just, it's cozy even though there's only a little shell underneath. And I just feel like it's such a cozy classic look super digging so that that's a nice potential for the dinner um this is the second one i didn't realize how messy the blouse was so apologies this is a thrifted silk three-quarter length sleeve uh blouse and pairing it with the shrug i kind of thought in my head with the dark on top with the cinch shrug and then the black pants with the neutral in the middle could be a really nice like sandwichy color I don't know if I'm loving it. Um, and also the shoes, either of course would go, I decided to go with the, the classic ballet flat, the, uh, the little thing back there. Um, just pull in all the black goodness. And this is good. I'm liking it. Might have to get the blouse steamed, of course, before I go out for dinner. But I enjoy the concept. I'm almost thinking that the, uh, the little shell might look even nicer. All right, getting into the last dinner look. Also could be like holiday party look with the Sin Shrug. This is a ridiculous thrift purchase that I picked up from a thrift shop in Prince Edward County, Ontario for $13, <laughs> so crazy. It's a really heavy cotton dress from Michael Kors and I feel like it is just a fabulous fit. It was such a find, I couldn't believe it. Um, I really enjoy again the black on black with the cinch shrug and even though again this is totally you know sleeveless and obviously not a super cozy dress 
that scent shrug just adds the warmth I think that I would need in the restaurant. That's perfect. I don't have to take it off. I don't have to worry about like, you know, if I'm actually going to do my hair for it to get wrecked. It's awesome. Um, pretty excited about the dress because, you know, she's a fun one and what a find. I'm just too happy with myself. Paired it with the, um, the suede shoe and it's kind of a dream. A little fancy, but maybe it's a little less fancy-ish because of cotton. Love it. Um, they're such a versatile accessory, as we know from Jackie Rose, that this can be worn in so many different ways. I hope you join our knit along, and if you do and wish to share a photo or a reel that you put together with your shrug of choice on Instagram, please enter our draw with the hashtag Holiday Shrug Club Cal for your chance to win one of the two prizes that we spoke about. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment on YouTube or you can always DM me in my Instagram. Getting into my next finished object, it is the, let me get it sorted, Press Flowers Pullover by Amy Christoffers, Savoring Knitting. This is an overall colorwork sweater done through mosaic knitting and it was a joy. It is a passion project as it is an all over colorwork sweater. I had started this um, well before we left on our trip and completed it well at I think the last leg of our adventures before we came home. Um, I took quite a few breaks with this sweater because in the beginning I was going full hog, then had my knitting injury that we'll just touch on a little later. So there was a significant break that happened um, during the knitting of this sweater. Well needed, took the break, came back at it. And I have to say with the mix of stitches that are created to make this gorgeous floral design. Um, I actually think it was a fantastic project to work on while trying to heal my uh, knitter's elbow. Uh, so this pattern is by again Amy Christoffers or Savoring Knitting. Um, I knit this using the uh, cream color is Pure Gant. Uh, this is a yarn from San Iscarn. It's a rustic but very mass-produced Norwegian yarn. Um, one that I didn't think I was going to fall in love with but fell quite heavily. Um, and the contrast color, so these are the um, uh, the, floor, the flowers. This is a yarn that I picked up from Fia Fia, which is a yarn shop in Halifax. They carry um, yarn by Alice Alishka, and it is um, hand-dyed yarn that is spun, <laughs> I'd say spun, um, using two different colors. So this was oranges and pinks, and every little flower is a different combination. The yarn was very interesting to work with. Um, I think it was slightly less than a DK, um, but it worked in the pattern, no problem. And I think um, with the plumping effect of the Pier Gant, really worked well. With this, I want to say uh, that I used a US 6 on the body, a US 4 on the rib, sirens. And um, I think that was the needle size recommended by the pattern, um, by the designer. I started out with the first size when I cast on um, for measurements according to uh, Amy, Amy Christopher's um, suggestions. However, uh, I think I might have mentioned this in my last video. When I got down to uh, where I was supposed to separate for the sleeves, it was significantly less than, I think she was calling for 20 centimeters from the cast on or the neckline. And I thought, this isn't going to work. It's going to be way too tight on my armpit. So I knit a whole other section of flowers in the pattern repeat to produce a deeper yoke. Um, it is a little too deep, I think, for what I would like. 
but I'd rather have it a little too deep than not deep enough. So in the end, I used the size two, or I think it was the small size. Um, it is pretty boxy. It is a hefty um, sweater. I have to say, I haven't weighed it yet. I, I will maybe, um, just out of curiosity, but it's a lot of yarn that was used. Um, this uh, with the mosaic, because you're slipping stitches to get the motif of the flowers and the um, the coloring for the rows, you're almost knitting like a two to one ratio to get one row. Um, so you're like doing double the work, but what a glorious end result. I'm just looking to see if I have anything else to say about it. Um, this sleeve, I did, I think one less round of the body chart for the length of the sleeve that I had wanted. And that's pretty much it. I think for the first time in almost like Paris Wool Knitting History, I really followed to the to the pattern and the details. They were so well written. I didn't see any issues um, or mistakes in the pattern, which was incredible because this was my first time with all over color work and with mosaic. So we very much relied on the pattern and it just creates this <laughs> just a stunning piece. Um, I also, in the joy of doing what I do, have put together a little video of styling for my Press Flowers Pullover. Um, so we'll go through that now. Flowers Pullover styling now. Um, such fun wearing this. I mean, I feel like not only was it a passion project to work on, but I'm feeling passionate about wearing this. She's gorge. I have to mention, this is unblocked. I purposely did not block it. I'm loving the texture. It feels good when you touch it with your hands and I'm liking the look. Obviously I will block it out, but I'm really not in a rush to. I feel like it's kind of a dream the way it is. I'm showing off the different details. So this is a one by one ribbing that's finished with the neck, the sleeves and the end of the body, of course, but there's a little pearl edge that's done right before. And I've seen that on even like plain sweaters. I'm really enjoying it. It's the first time I've done it. The pattern is just gorgeous. Like these flowers that come out from the different technique of the mosaic that's used by Amy Crosstoffers is just gorge. I've gotten a little fancy. We have a little like sparkly faux earring on. I mean, we're approaching the holidays. We're getting set. So we're bringing the fall look kind of into, you know, winter holiday look. I am I have to wear the orange socks. These socks I purchased in Owen Sound um, from the Soxophone player from Me For Wool. And I've worn these so much. I thought with the orange and the orange, like, hello, we're, we're a good time. And they're great socks. I've just got the blend stones. This would be like every day heading out. I mean, the sparkly earring, maybe just for fun. I'd probably, probably put the pearls, <laughs> put the pearls on instead. But you know, that's a good look. That's fun. I do wonder how much the sweater will grow with the blocking. But of course we're not done. We are reaching and grabbing more things. What? The floral Doc Martin Mary Janes. These are going on. I bought these in the spring and I have to say, they're just, they make the feet happy. They're ridiculous, they're fun. And uh, they're a little on the louder side. I mean, who wears patterns on shoe wear, like on feet, but I think this is, this is gonna be a fun one. We have floral up top, we have floral on the bottom. I hope we can kind of see it in the video, but digging hard. <laughs> <laughs> Press flowers pullover and floral Mary Janes. Totally in. Again, just like simple jean, everyday look. Yes, please. I'm enjoying it. I hope you are. I mean, I am. I'm having a good time. And I'm grabbing. This is the coat that I featured in one of my Instagram reels. This is a coat from my mother that she bought when she was pregnant, apparently with me at the end of the 70s um, at a de department store in Toronto. It's a uh, super 70s lapel. <laughs> like we're, we're exploding on the lapel here. 
I love everything about it. It is a really heavy wool coat, shorter sleeve to kind of expose the sweater sleeve. And it's an interesting fit. I really haven't seen this kind of jacket anywhere, or a DE jacket per se, but um, this is what she wear when she had a bigger belly. And I just wear it because it's a great time. It's fun. And that camel color, super, goes with everything, of course. Um, I am picking up a shawl. This shawl, um, gorgeous free pattern. This is from Espace Tricot. And this is called the Sunday Morning Shawl. It's one of their, I'm sure, many free shawls. And I know they have a lot of other free patterns online. Uh, they are also releasing a book, FYI, just saying. Uh, it's a fun little knit of like um, ribbing. It's a twisted rib, actually, with stock net and then some bobbles. And I'm such a bobble fan. I was obsessed for so long knitting bobbles. This is knit in an Austrian alpaca DK that I don't have recorded, um, but bought in Vienna. And finally, to wrap it up, to get extra cozy cos, I have some mittens. These are Oma Lenny's Mittens Chunky. This is also a free pattern, believe it or not. This is uh, designed, these mittens are designed by Grelina Knits. And I knit these in just the basic cream, or I think it was like just off white, Alpha Sloppy by Istex. And we are pretty pleased with the whole like neutral palette but not to like fiery fun with the press fire pullover. So good, such a good time. The second styling look that I put together for the press flowers pullover is with a hand, I shouldn't say hand sewn, machine sewn, but I sewed, um, pants. These pants are the Florence pants that were designed by Elizabeth Suzanne. This is a pattern, uh, paid for pattern, was free during COVID, then it had a variety of prices that happened. Now I think there's one solid price. It is a really simple sewn pant. I am, I'm not an expert sewer. These are fairly quick. Um, these are sewn with an orange um, heavy linen that I purchased off of Queen Street. Queen Street has a lot in Toronto, Queen West, um, a lot of fabric shops. I've got um, what I'm showing now are Mary Jane. These are the moles or malls, I think they're called from Duck Feet. It's a Danish company. Now I'm like, oh, do I go the flowers? So many options that can be fun. Not totally necessarily like winter ready, not only the linen pant, but in like an open kind of shoe, but it's fun. It's for fun. I'm digging. I mean, she's bright. She's loud. She's a good time. Yeah. And I've got to say with the pants, cause these are my favorite sewn pants, huge bottom hem that you sew up really nice drape. Gorgeous. So fun. Good time. And my last finished object is a hat. This hat, um, is called the everybody loves this hat. And I love this hat. Uh, this is a pattern and yarn uh, that I purchased at the Mariner's Daughter. Uh, this yarn is Sheepy's Terezo, and it is a very matte, um, but slightly tweed, tweeded yarn. Um, the hat pattern is a one by one rib that's produced. I used a needle size one smaller than the recommended, which is a uh, US three. And the decreases are, uh, how do we say it? Like cylindrical, like spiral, <laughs> they spiral as you go. And that is what caught me because I had a sample in the shop and I enjoyed so much those decreases. In the shop, they had the sample knit up in a like bright cherry red, but it was in a really high like luster yarn. It was a like a, Ilu, Ilu Ami, I forget how to say it, um, alpaca blend, and it was just stunning. Uh, this is nice, but it's not fancy. This is like everyday wear, and I'm gonna be fine. If I run in it, sweat in it, I think this is going to be a, like a workhorse kind of hat, um, which is fine because I always need bright running hats, especially in the city. Um, but I do have to say, I think my next um, everybody loves this hat 
pattern or hat hat <laughs> would be a funner more like fancy yarn that is the everybody loves this hat by um the mariner's daughter or i should say by Faye. Faye was the designer of this hat beautiful we are going to get into our whips so my first whip is the sweater breaking the sweater curse not much has been done on this <laughs> you're like you're such a bad girlfriend sorry selfish knitter um we have knit more stock net so you can see there's been there's been some but i have to say twofold where um first the knitting time that i was taking to knit i wanted to knit other objects that i was really they were shining to me and fun, new, um, but also with this is dark, it's dark yarn. We have definitely hit that dark time in the Northern hemisphere with a lot less light. And with stock net, that is usually an evening knit for me. So I've been wearing my little like knit lamp um, during those times. I often can kind of feel the stitches, but I just want to guarantee that they're still on there and look. Um, we're still not worried about it. And until we are, we're fine. Um, next whip. I'm not even gonna show you my other ones because you've seen them and there hasn't been change, but we have two new whips that are started. I know, <laughs> come on. Uh, we have this guy. This is a brand new mitt to me. I'm just turning to the correct page. These are called the Dainty Bubble Mitts. And sorry if you've got strings hanging out here. This is a free pattern with a, like, I don't know how to, a weaved cable. I'm not sure what kind of cable this is. Um, that is quite intricate. It It's a, I think a 16 um, row repeat. So for me, not memorizable, um, but has been fun regardless. Uh, this is this is on a big gauge. I've knit this using the yarn that I purchased at the Chocolate River Yarns and Fiber Shop um, from Sue. This was a yarn I didn't know I was going to do with, and I was thinking I would love to knit a shrug. This is in my mother's very favorite blue. It's like an 80s kind of Delph blue, um, but I thought it was too rustic for her. She's very, she needs like soft and supple, and this, this wasn't going to be it, um, but I figured she'd like mitts. Uh, that are super cozy. So I've knit this on, um, I think, two sizes down from the recommended needle size. These are a US 8 that I've knit this on um, for the cabling and the stock net. Um, this uh, ribbing, which is a three by one ribbing, I've done a US 7. This I have modified, of course, <laughs> so here we go. Free pattern, mind you, so if you're into kind of mods and uh, are into a free pattern, here we go. Um, so they recommend that you do, I think it's like two different repeats of the specific cabling um, after the 16 count cable or 16 row cabling. Um, I only needed one. So I did one um, and then I started doing the decreases. So we were like here on the decreases and I thought, cool, let's uh, let's just like bind it up. Didn't work. <laughs> it was a little too small, but if I had a gone, that whole other cabling repeat should be like up here. My mom has hands my size, so not giant. Um, so what I did is I finished with the last cable repeat if you will from the last row and instead of decreasing all of the decreases i got to i think it was like halfway through the decreases i gave it just kind of a rough eyeball and try on um i knit for like i think three oh, i just did this this morning <laughs> three rows and then i did the remainder of the decreases um just right before obviously the bind off the pattern recommends a Kitchener stitch bind off, which I did. And if you know Kitchener stitch, it creates this like very boxy rectangular edge. For me, it didn't work. So I took it out and I did 
uh, I knit the, what's it called? The, the 12 stitches that remain. Um, I just uh, threaded a tapestry needle, ran the, the um, finishing yarn through, and I think for me, this is a better look. Um, a better fit. I have not blocked these at all. This is only one mitt, so this was kind of like the the sample. And the thumb is, she's a hefty thumb, so I'm also going to rip this out, not cast on as many stitches at the thumb. It was recommended to do three. I followed the pattern. I significantly reduced the length as well. However, I might do like one cast on or do knit three, or sorry, I should say pick up three stitches at the thumb gusset, but then do decreases right away in that first round. And then I will get a uh, more fitted, less ease thumb. So the concept of this mitt is amazing. And I'm sure if I had to use the appropriate yarn with the relatively appropriate needles, we would have got there. Um, but this thread or the, sorry this yarn is just it's so it's so hefty and it's such a glorious memory of Nova Scotia my mother also adores Nova Scotia so this I think will be very nice I don't think I mentioned these are for her birthday you may have heard that I am going to her birthday dinner which is I was talking about wearing the shrug wit outfit I I might wear and which one you think it would be the funnest one to wear to a birthday dinner. Um, so I'm gifting her these super cabley mitts. I'm hoping this will block out here. <laughs> and uh, I think I'll have to just do some, uh, you know, knitter's magic and kind of like pull it to make it pretty. But I think for her, she does a lot of walking in the woods and, um, you know, activity with shoveling and things. And these, I think, can take it. These are from... A Canadian sheep. They're they're rustic. They're hardworking. The wool will be tough, and so I think they're going to be just wonderful for her. But like even the hand dye job of the coloring, oh, so good, so fun. Uh, these are the dainty bauble mitts. That is by T Shep. It's all one name, kind of like Madonna, and um, free pattern. Check it out, dainty bubbles. The next whip is. I have a new cast on. So naughty, naughty knitter. Um, this, which is not looking like much of anything right now, <laughs> she's the uh, champagne cardigan. This I have had on my Autumn Intentions knitting wheel uh, for quite some time. And instead of spinning um, the wheel to see what sweater or object was going to come up next for me to knit I uh superseded that and I decided this is something that I want to cast on for me so I did it we just we just jump ship um this is being knit with peace fleece uh this is the peace fleece worsted in some salmon I can't see a Sacklin salmon. I purchased three cones of this from Harrisville Designs when I visited the Harrisville Design Studio. Uh, the mill was sadly closed by then, uh, sorry, then in the summer, but the studio was very open and could have stayed there for days, just googly eyeing at yarn. And she's now becoming a cardigan, a um, champagne cardigan. I'm thrilled. I'm excited. The gauge I have is bigger uh, than what's recommended in the pattern. I really hope it works out. I'm knitting the smallest size. I've reduced my needles. I'm doing a size 6 US. I think the pattern originally calls for US 8. And this is my very first cardigan. I think the champagne cardigan has been hitting it out of the park with the podcasters and I'm joining. <laughs> I like to think I was one of the first to be like, oh, this is what I want to knit, but I just didn't do it. So we're doing it now, better late than never. Um, and the coloring, I know my light is leaving, but this is just a really beautiful, like ready orange, deep coral with little bits and bobs of like a pink and yellow, a little cream. It's just, it's gonna be super fun. And I already have buttons for it. The buttons I have, 
oh, it's gonna make big subs at the end of the way. Does this count as an acquisition? I do have acquisitions. Sorry. <laughs> I realize I do. I was thinking I didn't have any. Totally fibbed. Totally. Okay. This is this is acquisition. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like knitter's life. Okay, these. Look at these gorgeous buttons. These buttons. Oh, there we go. Yes. Um, they're ceramic buttons that I picked up from Fia Fia. Well, we were in Lunenburg. We had gone in to Halifax on a Friday night to have dinner with a family friend. And of course, I said to the love of my life, if we can just like pop in maybe like an hour-ish early before dinner, that'd be amazing. And so we did. So I popped in. Um, oh my gosh, don't we? My vacation was like a million days ago and it really wasn't. Um, so I popped in while the love of my life was waiting in the car and I bounced around. I saw Juliana again and she's just a dream. Um, so lovely, kind, calm and helpful. I just adore her and I wish I lived closer, you know, to Halifax in general and to Juliana at Fia Fia. Um, I had to pick up these buttons because I saw these buttons the last time I was there and I had a little bit of regret that I didn't get them. Um, so they are ceramic, they will break, obviously, but here's the fun thing. The champagne cardigan calls for, I think it's four buttons. So I have two buttons in reserve if I need. And like, look how gorgeous this is gonna be. This is ridiculous. Like I've never knit a cardigan. This might make me be a cardigan knitter after this because these buttons with the fabric, I'm definitely enjoying all of this, which brings me perhaps to my other acquisition. I have to go get it. I can't believe I said I didn't pick up any yarn and I totally did. Um, these are also from Juliana's shop at Fia Fia in Halifax. It is pure Gant, what? Um, this is in a colorway that I hadn't seen before. Uh, not that I've really shot for pure Gant other than the natural color um, that I've used for my uh, Press Virus pullover, but fell in love with the yarn. It's a commercial yarn, which again, nothing against commercial yarns, but it really felt good. It felt good to work with, felt good in the hands, and it looks great. Um, so this is a slightly tweeted yarn. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm gonna do yet. Uh, it is in uh, Colorway 2720. And um, it's slightly gray. I mean, the coloring is probably garbage right now because of the light, so my apologies. Um, but it's a gray to cream. I bought two balls um, with the hopes of knitting a hat. Um, I think I'm gonna do some kind of like double ribbed hat. Um, I mean, I've got, I've got a few patterns, very petite knit-esque. Uh, Juliana has suggested another pattern. I don't, I can't remember the name off my hand. Um, that was a free pattern, but this is it. Like simple rib beanies. There are tons of free patterns out there. So I might, uh, I might dabble, see what I can do. So there are the yarn acquisitions along with the buttons, all from Fia Fia. Thanks. Um, I don't know when and if I'll ever be up to the amount I was knitting before, but that's fine. I'm still able to enjoy the hobby that I find such deep passion with. Okay, that was a long one, I feel. Um, I wanna thank everybody for joining me today and I never do this, but since I am now, you know, absorbing the fact that I've become not only a knitter, but a knitting podcaster, um, I will happily and kindly ask if you are willing to potentially subscribe to the channel, like or comment, um, and as well follow on Instagram if you are not following already. With that being said, uh, if you wish to participate in the Holiday Shrug Club Cal uh, for a knit along, please do have any questions, of course, let me know. Otherwise, I very much look forward to seeing more photos and reels uh, from our gorgeous knitting community and the creativity that you're having. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's that. So we are already looking at our next adventures away. And 
I always get excited. I get excited about coming home. I get excited even more for leaving. And uh, yeah, until then, I'll be knitting happily in the city, responsibly, of course, and ergonomically correct, of course, um, and dreaming up my second uh, cow, or I should say my second shrug for the knit along that's happening. A gift knit for sure. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. I hope you find joy in your knitting today and do so in a safe way. Take care until next time. Thank <laughs> you.